Hey cats, Ed Bud here. Today I've got a max cushion matchup for you. It seems to be the current trend within running shoe designs to maximize those midsoles. We've got unheard levels of cushion. Pancakes of different foams with lots of energy return in some cases, but are they all the same? Do we really need max cushion shoes? Let's dive in. Thanks for joining me people on this voyage into Max Cushion. I'm gonna be comparing some models from my collection here and offering you my experiences in each one. I wanna try and differentiate and speculate a little bit about the use of each of these models, how they might be used in the real world, out there in the wild. Before we get to that though, if you're enjoying the content on the channel, do hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications when I launch those new videos for you. It really helps us out too if you give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it with your running buddies. Drop us a Super thanks as well to keep the shoes rolling in. Five shoes to examine today, and here they are. We've got the Fuel Cell SC Trainer from New Balance, the Nike Zoom X Invincible Run Flyknit 2, the Adidas Adi Zero Primax Strung, the On Running Cloud Monster, and the Saucony Endorphin Shift 3. All of these shoes use much larger stacks than some of their daily counterparts, in a bid, I guess, to lessen the strain and impact on those joints. Some of them have got plate components in the midsole to try and improve the stability. Others have got added pieces like TPU sections around the heel to try and do just that. I'm gonna be examining these shoes in various different categories in today's video. Firstly, the cushion level, so how squashy and compressive the midsole is. Secondly, stability. Does the runner need lots of ankle strength and a neutral foot strike to use the shoe? Third is versatility. Is the shoe usable over a variety of different paces? And fourth, how durable the shoe is. That could be the midsole cushion, but also the outsole. I will be considering the weight of each of the shoes as well. I've compared those up on the table. I will show you that later on. Are these shoes worth adding to the rotation? Do you really need them? Kicking off with the Nike Zoom X Invincible Run Flyknit 2. In terms of cushion, there's lots and lots of foam here, but it's not always a case of pillow-like squash. The Invincible Run Flyknit 2, though, is the squashiest of all five in today's video. It's all Zoom X here in the midsole and no plate, so you just kind of sink into it. The Zoom X midsole incredibly cushioned and I found it leaves the feet and legs feeling very fresh after use. Though the foam itself is rather fragile, You've got to be really careful not to catch the back section here in the heel on anything that's sharp it will tear very easily that said it has kept its cushion properties mile after mile though with all the squash here in the shoe it isn't the most stable you've got this oversized section here in the heel and also in the forefoot i think that's there to try and increase the amount of surface area for you to land on i think if people have got stability issues and they need some sort of components in their shoes to help them then the invincible run might actually exasperate some of those issues though perhaps the invincible run is slightly more versatile than some of the other shoes in today's video it's certainly not a jack of all trades probably one that's really good for recovery or perhaps longer runs i'm going to give this one three points for cushion one point for stability Maybe a two out of three for versatility this time around. You can run some faster pace stuff in it, but I don't think you want to do it for all that long. In terms of durability as well, this one's held up pretty well. I'll give it a score of two out of three. Even the outsole's been pretty decent. It's hundreds of miles into this one. Second up in the cushion stakes for me is the Adidas Adizero Primax Strung. The Light Strike Pro layers with those additional rods and plates aren't quite as cushioned and squashy as the Invincible Run, but this shoe is still extremely forgiving when you take it out on longer efforts. Perhaps though, a little bit more responsive due to the fact it's not so squashy. Now, Light Strike Pro is no Zoom X. They're very different beasts. So don't expect a Zoom X style squash from this one. It offers its own brand of cushion, which has a more responsive feel underfoot. It seems to get better and better as well, the more miles you put into it, where Zoom X does start to give out after uh, so many miles. You know where I'm coming from. So I think I'll give this one a two out of three for cushion. In terms of stability, there are other shoes in today's video that are vastly more stable than the Primax, despite the fact that we've got all these other bits of tech in the shoe to try and make it that bit more stable it still is one that you need to 
take a bit of time over you need a reasonably neutral foot strike those with vertigo or pronation issues need not apply here the primax is potentially one of the most versatile shoes though in today's video i mean this works at race paces and easy recovery paces too that cannot be said about all of the other shoes the additional stabilizing elements here mean this shoe isn't perhaps the most cushioned of all of the max cushion offerings but it's certainly more propulsive for it i'll give it a three out of three for versatility it's the most expensive expensive shoe in today's video at 230 earth credits here in the UK but you get fantastic value from the Primax in terms of durability over time. The outsole is exceptionally durable over multiple miles. In fact this pair are uh, practically unused. So uh, certainly a quality item here I'll give it a 3 out of 3 for durability. Next up is the SC Trainer from New Balance. This one is one of the more stable offerings in today's video. Despite that, very, very high stack. It isn't quite as high as it appears. It does cup around the foot a little bit. That fuel cell foam has begun to soften up a little bit the more and more I've used it, but it doesn't quite have the same super squash as the Invincible Run or the Prime X. So I'm going to give it a 1.5 out of 3 for cushion. Though it is far more stable than both the Invincible Run and the Prime X on foot. Less of an issue perhaps if you have some pronation problems. I think it's perhaps a little bit more usable in terms of foot strike as well. If you heel strike, midfoot strike or perhaps you're meeting the ground on your forefoot. Though as you run slower I guess that's less likely to happen. Does feel a little bit more guided this shoe. I think it's probably something to do with the plate placement underfoot. That side it is a max cushion shoe so don't expect lots of ground feel here in the SC Trainer. I'll give it a 2 out of 3 for stability when I compare it up against the other shoes today. Now I have found this one to be far less versatile than the Invincible Run or the Primax. It's like a smooth cruiser really for sustainable pace miles but not much else really. There's a lot of weight and bulk here. I'll give it a 1 out of 3 for versatility so far. The foam is softening up a little bit here so it isn't exactly like it was when I first took it out the box. There is a bit of fraying to that fuel cell foam underfoot. I mean I'm not too worried about that at all. There's a massive midsole foam here. It's going to take a long time to wear that down. I'll give it a 2 out of 3 for durability so far. I mean there's no rubber wear whatsoever here. I am glad to see the New Balance have improved the outsole on this one. Some of them in the last couple of years haven't been the best. Next up, the Cloud Monster from On. Now, a shoe that when I picked it up sort of quoted as being max cushioned, but I really don't find it that way. I mean, the height's there in terms of max cushion, but it doesn't really deliver. Middle of the road, really, from my perspective and experiences so far, and that's mainly down to the fact that there isn't really that much foam underfoot. I think of all the max cushion shoes in today's video, it's got the least amount of cushion. The Cloud Tech pods here, I shall give a one out of three for the cushion. Though in fairness, the more minimal cushion here does grant the shoe some more stability perhaps because the plate is placed very close to the foot it does feel like quite a guided and smooth ride i suppose less squash here a more smoothed out feel perhaps on par i guess with the sc trainer from that respect now i found the cloud monster to be one of the least versatile in today's video doesn't really feel all that special to run in it not really that plush either i'd rather they increase the weight slightly and improve that tongue probably a closer match in terms of versatility to the sc trainer and i guess durability is similar as well i'm not dead set on the rubber here that's included on the outsole and i already got loads of debris caught up in the uh, cloud tech pods here in the midsole the upper materials here leave me a little perplexed i don't quite understand why they've gone with these sort of fabric lace loops surely that's going to reduce the durability of the upper a little bit so a 1.5 for versatility and a 1.5 for the durability too Last shoe up today in the comparison is Endorphin Shift 3 from Socony. I'd say the cushion here is probably on par with what we've got in the New Balance SC Trainer. Though I find this one a little bit more stable than the New Balance offering. I think I'll probably give it a 1.5 for cushion out of 3. Same as the SC Trainer. Though a 2.5 out of 3 for stability. It's a really smoothed out ride here in the Socony. In fact, I think it's probably the most stable of the bunch out of all five in today's video. There we go. 
again, a max cushion shoe that isn't all that versatile. That's something of a trend amongst all of these shoes, really. The more and more midsole stack you put here, well, dependent on the foam, the less and less versatile the shoe is. Good for a few applications, but sadly not for any faster work. So I'll give it a 1.5 out of 3 for versatility this time around. Durability is once again good, though, on this Saucony shoe. That seems to be the case for pretty much all of their stuff. No major wear or tear to the foam or upper at this point. It must be noted that the Endorphin Shift 3 is only one gram heavier than the Prime X. That is the lightest shoe of the bunch, so it's kind of weird really. I never realized this one was quite so light. I'll go for a two out of three for durability for the Endorphin Shift 3. Weight-wise, you've got 306 grams for the Prime X, 307 for the Endorphin Shift 3, 317 grams for the Cloud Monster. We then have the SC Trainer at 335 and the Invincible Run Flying It 2 back in last place at 347 grams. It should be noted here that the SC Trainer does come in at a 11 and a half UK, which is a US 12. So effectively all of these shoes are US 12. There's quite a noticeable difference though between the Prime X and the Invincible Run and all the other shoes in today's video. Those come out easily as the most cushioned. Though all of the shoes today are over 300 grams in my size. So it does seem that max cushion comes at the price of weight. Also max cushion doesn't necessarily have to mean super squashy and compressive the endorphin shift is a really nice stable offer and max cushion now doesn't mean that the durability of the shoe will be compromised either it seems as if the manufacturers have figured out that they need to use some reasonable materials here to hold everything together though of course we have the issue that most max cushion shoes lack versatility in terms of their use not all max cushion shoes are built the same as you can see in today's video nor perhaps are they made for the same intended use case the invincible run and the primex stand out in today's video they're a little bit more capable in terms of running at some faster paces, whereas the shoes from On, New Balance and from Saucony do seem to be locked into that sort of slower recovery or easy pace. But pretty much all of them, aside from the On shoe, maybe leave your legs feeling less fatigued. So in my opinion, it's a little bit more down to the foam utilised in the shoe rather than the amount of it. What are your thoughts on Max Cushion shoes, people? Do you use them in your daily training? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. Musical interlude time. You guys may remember from the last video I was talking about a 90s music retrospective video and documentary that I watched recently on BBC. Got me thinking about how great Suede were. I used to love Suede. In fact, in all their different kind of periods really one of my most favorite albums though is coming up i think they did a reissue of that a few years back remastered the track sound really really fresh and lively i think the beautiful ones is a fantastic sort of pop rock track the introduction alone is just so memorable you can hear that jaguar chiming away and it's got this fizzy quality when the drums and the bass kick in and it's got such a great chorus as well suede really entered into this sort of new phase when they released that album and great success too i do recall seeing the band when they reformed it must have been over 10 years ago now at ali pali and brett anderson's energy was just infectious the guy almost seemed to be wanting to make up for lost time it's like he'd been plugged into the mains and he was just all over the place, all over the stage. It was absolutely fantastic. Sounded really good too. If you've never heard this one, go and check it out, guys. There's so many great tracks on it, including the beautiful ones. Swayed with coming up. Thanks for watching today's video, guys. It is always appreciated. Help the channel out with a super thanks. That helps us on an ad hoc basis. You can also pick up some merchandise as well. I will have some of that to demo on the channel very soon. Hit that subscribe button, click the bell below for notifications. Also give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.